Hi, this is Shadi and today I'm gonna try and answer a question Is Judo or BJJ alone enough for self-defense and the streets? Because this question comes up a lot and a lot of it try to answer it but is it enough because I see a lot of people try to incorporate striking into their training or they cross train with either Muay Thai or English boxing with their judo or BJJ or wrestling or sambo so is it enough just to train these grappling arts alone even though they are very efficient and they are proven to work are they enough alone for someone that's really out there to try to do you harm and possibly and your life or the life of your family um, let's try to experience both scenarios because a lot of you can say yes and a lot of you can say no so this is pretty much a gray area and let's try to experience both uh, scenarios and try to uh, see which one outweighs the other so the first one is that you might come across someone who is very big strong and they have naturally large hands and they clip you on the chin and it's lights out and that is very possible because you can be somewhat of a lucky striker you, you can get a lucky hook a lucky jab if you are someone very strong very big hands um, and you have a very good reach it's not like grappling you cannot get a lucky triangle choke or a lucky osotogari against someone who's skilled so that is very possible and that is the downside of grappling that you cannot expect a good striker or someone who's just simply experienced in street fighting but odds are you're gonna be able to close the distance and you know control the body and when it comes to survival trust me you are more capable than you will ever know I've been slapped and continued fighting and I've been punched and continued to fight when at school it was become unbearable and I had to eventually push back like I've mentioned I've experienced a lot of uh, bullying at school and I was surprised that even though I got you know punched in the face and heavily slapped so that one side of my face is like burning I was so angry yet I continued to fight so never underestimate the uh, quote-unquote cat that's inside you because a cat a house no matter how scared it is uh, put it in a corner it becomes very vicious and somewhat we are the same thing uh, but top it all off with training and discipline and grappling skills you can be very lethal no matter the size you are so you know counting on someone just able to clip you on your chin so it doesn't matter if you train or not is very stupid and ridiculous the second scenario is that you know there's multiple attackers there's weapons involved a steel rod knife uh, where I come from razor braids are very hot they would put them in their mouth uh, and under their wrists it was very dangerous and very nasty and they were just all basically criminals a lot of them went to jail a lot of them died uh, where I came from a very rough neighborhood so yes it is highly impossible that you will or highly possible that you will survive this kind of scenario but then again someone who lives in an MMA camp uh, I would doubt that they would survive this kind of scenario as well multiple attackers with you know very dangerous weapons involved so again appealing to futility and saying that all this stuff might happen so it doesn't matter if I train so might not train at all is ludicrous um, appealing to futility is by default a logical fallacy so the no scenarios that the grappling arts don't work in the streets are kind of a logical fallacy so the second now let's start to uh, analyze the positive we all know that a BJJ like a small BJJ purple belt a uh, woman can tap like a footballer uh, there's tons of videos on YouTube and Instagram uh, like big heavy bodybuilders a small stature woman can take their back and put them in a rear naked choke so that's one thing good about grappling is the body control um, the technique over strength um, 
you know, some, for example, a woman is being, you know, assaulted, that person is in her guard, um, all she has to do is manage her stress of the situation, but, you know, it, this is the thing, a fight or an assault is never guaranteed to anyone. There's so much going on, there's your emotions, there's your stress alarm, uh, Either it can go like really good and you like really have good survival instincts and you become really ferocious or you can just freeze and you don't know what to do and you just like be there and you let it happen to you. So it also depends on what you're made of and your character. So again, nothing is guaranteed to anyone. Tomorrow is never guaranteed to anyone. But again, saying that doesn't mean that oh you should drop training altogether um for example in judo if you get a manage to hold of them a hold of them and you know doing something simple like osotogari and they land the back of their head on the asphalt they're pretty much done um same thing with a double leg takedown if you're a wrestler or a back suplex if you're a greco-roman wrestler um you know, we are getting slammed on the mats so frequently, but these techniques are really lethal. They were made to kill at war times. So keep that in mind. Um, so the simple question, is it alone enough? I would say yes. Is it perfect? Is it bulletproof? No, nothing is. Even if you're, like I, like I said, if you live in an MMA camp, no fight is guaranteed to anyone, especially if someone is, you know, sociopathic or psychopathic and they're just out there inflicting harm and they bring their friends along with them, you know, like a, like I said, like a group assault with weapons. So, but on the one-on-one -on -one situation, it also comes down to your understanding of your surrounding, your character, how you were brought up. For example, if, um, you are someone that's heavily abused as a child to the point that you don't have a character anymore, you don't have a spine anymore, and then you picked up some training. Um, it's gonna be hard to deal with this stressful situation. So there's a lot going on in a fight. Your psychology, your surrounding, minding your surrounding, understanding that you are in danger or not. Um, this is why this is such a gray area, but a lot of us ask this question, is it enough alone? Because we all have jobs, some of us are students, some of us have families. So we're trying to invest as much time as possible, but at the same time reaping the much benefits. So should you become an MMA fighter in order to defend yourself on the streets? No. But is it enough to train grappling arts alone for the streets? as well as, you know, something like physical conditioning, um, strength training, becoming strong, muscular. Yes, but also I want to talk about, you know, you know, your character, if you are submissive or not. The good thing about these arts is that they do the opposite. For example, if you are submissive, chances are after training, you won't be because, you know, you had your uh, drills, you learned to fight back. Um, you learn that I cannot be submissive because I will get killed. So I myself think enough, they are enough on their own. Uh, I don't know about striking. I've never trained in striking in my life. The only training I've had was in Aikido, BJJ and Judo. So I'm not qualified to speak on behalf of a striker, someone, for example, that's trained Muay Thai all their life. I, I don't know. I'm not qualified. Uh, I have zero experience in striking. So the only thing I can talk about is grappling because I've grappled for religiously six days a week for 14 months now. So I would say alone is enough. And even someone like Chrome Gracie and Hickson Gracie, when they say, if you don't know self-defense, you don't know jujitsu. Uh, that's why he has those self-defense courses, um, not just jiu-jitsu stuff, you know, jiu-jitsu against jiu-jitsu, but 
something like a push against a wall, standing side headlock, someone charging at you trying to push you or grab your collar, how to stand, how to shift your weight. Um, all of it is present in the self-defense unit 2.0. I will be reviewing it and talking about the content that's in it. I think it's very helpful just to as a short answer, but there's a lot more to it. Um, the point is, uh, these arts were made for self-defense. No one cross-trained in everything in order to become efficient. So something like judo, like high-level judo and you know, high level jujitsu where you start standing up, you learn your takedowns, uh, your grip fighting, etc. I think alone is enough. Um, but saying that fights and tomorrow is never guaranteed to anyone. No one knows what might happen. All you can do is prepare. Um, never appeal to futility. So this was Shadi and thank you for listening.